Welcome to Classical Education, a podcast for those who believe in rediscovering the art of asking questions, engaging in conversation, and attending to the ideas at the heart of well-ordered teaching and learning. I invite you to join me on a journey in pursuit of the true, the good, and the beautiful as a participant in the great conversation and listen to the many voices coming from the world of classical education. I have a special announcement. Trey has ventured out to work on a serial podcast to tell the important story of the Integrated Humanities Program taught by professors Dennis Quinn, John Sr., and Frank Nellick. This new podcast will follow the program's life and legacy and include interviews with alumni. Anyone interested in being notified about Trey's new podcast should subscribe to his newsletter at treybailey.substack.com. That's treybailey.substack.com. And he's also continuing to host interviews with classical educators in the Catholic tradition. These conversations will be published through the Catholic Education Initiative YouTube channel. I'm happy to support his work as he continues to be a blessing to the podcasting communities. Many of our listeners and followers on our Facebook group probably have heard of ACES, which is, stands for Australian Classical Education Society. And I am blessed to have gotten to know Khan Buzikas and getting to help him with some of the work he's doing in Australia. And I'm very excited about uh, the work that they're doing. So I asked him to come on the show to tell us more about what's going on in Australia. And uh, so, Khan, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here, Adrian. Thank you very much. And I look forward to having the conversation and answering your questions. Yeah. So I wanted to start off just by asking you to share with our listeners why you think Australian education needs a reform? What's going on in Australia? Well, Australia um, is a modern country, and in the last um, in the last in the last decades, most Australian education policymakers have um, have preferred to have a progressive type of education, uh, an education that is very very based on evidence. Um, best methodologies that have been proven, that work. Um, they're very, very focused on research-driven um, policies um, that, that, are a, that, that can happen in schools. Um, but what's happened recently, Adrian, is that many Australians, I want to say Australians, I'm, I'm including teachers, parents, um, academics, um, have realised that perhaps um, their understanding of education is not the correct understanding, that um, education needs to be looked at from a different light, from a different perspective. So many Australians are starting to have conversations about what should education be in our country? Um, should it just be inquiry-based learning? Should it just be STEM? You know, that's a big, mm -hmm. big name these days. I'm sure also in America. So these conversations are occurring. And some Australians, um, um, Adrian, uh, are starting to realise that there's something called classical education out there. So that's, um, so yeah, to answer your question, yes, um, education in Australia needs to be reformed. Um, and part of that reform um, should include a discussion or what I always like to say to everyone, Adrian, is an, an exploration I say to many Australians, have you ever explored classical education? Have you ever just thought about it and gone to do some research about it? Mm -hmm. What kind of response do you get from that? I'm curious. Well, some Australians uh, say to me, no, they haven't. Um, others say to me, thank you. I will start doing that. So I will start to explore that. Um, so I'm getting mixed responses. Um, and that's and and that probably leads to one of your questions. That's where ACES comes comes along, where we are trying to um, enlighten, um, inform is a probably, probably better word. And we want to inform Australians about what classical education and why they should consider it as an option, as a schooling model in our country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us about ACES. 
Yes. So ACES um, was established two years ago, Adrian. It began in 2021. And it began with a few teachers who live in different parts of Australia, again, having a conversation about education. So from those few teachers, the conversation um, has now spread to every part of Australia. I, la I live in Melbourne, Victoria, the state of Victoria. But when we say ACES, we mean all of Australia. Now, we have, we have Queensland, we have the Northern Territory, we have Western Australia, we have we have the ACT. So there are teachers, Adrian, in those states and territories who share my passion. So they share my passion, who have been, who, who love the idea of classical. So we meet regularly and we have established a network where we talk about classical education. We talk about the books that have been written about classical education. We talk about how we can train ourselves how we can be formed, because I want to be very honest from the outset with yourself and your listeners, um, Andrew, no one in Australia, and I've had this slowly, no one in Australia has been classically trained. No one in Australia. There may be very, very few exceptions, and I'll get to that at some other stage in this conversation, but most of us have received a progressive type of education. So we have got a long way to go. So back to your question, the ACES is about Australia. It's mostly teachers at this stage. We're trying to get more parents. Now, one other thing, we don't have a huge homeschooling movement in Australia, although mm. it is growing. Since COVID, homeschooling has started to um, flourish in our country. It's not as huge as in America, but it's flourishing, and we're hoping that it will continue to flourish. So we're trying to reach out um, to parents, homeschooling parents in Australia, teachers, and we're just trying to tell them that there is something called classical education. It's interesting you brought up homeschooling. I know uh, as a former homeschool mother um, that – the classical education movement in America really was birthed out of the large homeschool movement that we have here. Okay. So that, that's that's an interesting point uh, that, that can really help. And the classical education movement we have here in America, um, a lot of the reason why we're doing this is because we want to uh, also reform schools in America for sem for many of the same reasons that you're saying, because our schools are, are no different. It doesn't sound like they're any different than yours. And interestingly, you know, most of our listeners know that I love Charlotte Mason. And if you read her books, the schools in England in the 19th century were also becoming very science-driven, science-based, and data-driven, I guess is a, a better word to put it. Because um, we like science and we obviously want and can and should respect good scientific studies on how we learn. Uh, these are all valid and good. And uh, Charlotte Mason mentions throughout all of her books, all of the scientific discoveries of her day and, and how important they were and what they were showing about the way children learn. So I think that just to clarify for our listeners, um, that there are good things that come out of that, right? And out of the progressive model. And the, and a, honestly, uh, a lot of the, the well, there's a well meaning behind the progressive model because these people also care about education. They're just maybe not aware, like you're saying, of the beauty of classical education that really does actually, uh, when done well and 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 applied, uh, align to what they're looking for. What they're really looking for is students who really love learning and and want to become better human beings. That's what we really want. We all want that. We want to do what's best for children, right? So I'm really excited that you have a passion to make people aware at least enough to look at what's out there about classical education, investigate it. I'm curious, what kind of resources do you recommend? Because I know that in Australia, your book, your ability to purchase books is limited from the books that we have available to us in America. Obviously, there's a lot of things online for free. What, are, what do you recommend to people to read to help them get to yes. understand classical education? Yes, I will answer that question. I'm just taking notes. And if I could just have 10 seconds just to touch up from your last point, because this video will be looked at by many Australian teachers. And I just want to say I'm not condemning 
or thinking ill of any Australian teacher. Right. I respect the work that you do in Australia, my fellow Australian teachers. I too am a teacher, so I do not condemn you. I do not dislike you. In fact, I respect you and I love you. However, as Adrian has very importantly said, um, classical education is a broad-based education and it really completes the human being and the person. So back to your question about resources. Yes, well, here in Australia, um, we have realised that there have there are books that have been written about classical education, books such as Norms and Ability, um, the books such as The Liberal Arts Tradition by Ravi and Jane. So some of us um, uh, here in Australia um, are reading these books, um, are really coming together to discuss these books. Um, uh, those are those are yeah, so the main books will be um the Ravi Jain book, the Liberal Arts Edition, which I believe now has a second edition. Um, the book Norms and Nobility, many Australians are starting starting to read that book. There's also the book called Poetic Knowledge, I believe, by James Taylor. That's another book that we also are starting to explore. Um, also another book that many of us have been um uh, many of us were exposed to last year, last year um, Adrian, was the books that had been written by Mortimer Adler. Um, some of us did a Paideia training course with Dr. Robert Woods in your country about a year ago, and he exposed us to some of the books that he's written about. I think it's called The Art of Reading or The, huh? um, the Beauty of Reading, something along those lines. Um, so some of those books as well. Um, Obviously, um, uh, Pastor Douglas Wilson, um, you know, those books, I believe, were very big in, in the renewal in, in America as well. Um, uh, they're, they're probably the, the main books. And, and, and you mentioned, again, uh, sorry, Charlotte Mason. Yes, there's actually, you mentioned Charlotte Mason before. There's actually a school in Australia um, called Charlotte Mason College in Queensland. Um, so I would imagine that most of those teachers in Queensland have heard of Charlotte Mace and have read her books um, as yeah. well. So I would probably they're the, they're probably the main ones at the moment. They're the main yeah. resources that we're looking at. Yes. Yeah. And what? Um, well, a couple of questions. One being, uh, if you could, because we may have some Australians listening to this, if you could direct them to where they could get these books. You know, where where, yes. where they're provided through. We we want to talk about that for a minute. Also, what? Yeah resources online have you like are there any books online like uh i know i use gutenberg.org i think it's called gutenberg.org and they they um have a lot of public uh, gutenberg.org has a lot of public domain books um and so there's plenty of older books like and then even like you can read plato online so I'm just curious if there's any free things online that, that you do recommend. And I want to plug that Charlotte Mason's series, her six books can, are online, and you would go to amblesideonline.org. We'll put this in the show notes. And then you Thank go you. to the tab on that website that says Charlotte Mason, and then you'll click on the tab that's called the Homeschool Series. And so it's six books. And the in my opinion, the best book to start with is volume six, which is called A Philosophy of Education. And everything in that book is in line with the tradition of classical education and how children learn. Um, but yes, if you could answer a little bit more about resources and places Australians could go to to, to get these, these books. There, there is a website called Logos Australis that has been created by Sarah Flynn OD, who lives in Queensland. And on this website, which is called Logos Australis, you can purchase um, resources about classical education. Um, some of the books that we have already mentioned. So we, and also on that website, Sarah Flynn OD also posts articles mm -hmm. that she has written uh, about classical education, um, blogs. Um, that parents and teachers can access. And those books are very, very accessible and um, I must say are very cheaply priced um, because as you mentioned earlier, it's very, very difficult for us to purchase books directly from America. By having this vehicle where we can purchase books from um, this website, um, we have greater access um, to these books. Um, now, in terms of online resources, well, I've mentioned Sarah's. Um, I would say, uh, look, we have, we have a newsletter that comes out once a month where we just put articles as well, where I ask people to write articles. Um, but I think we don't really have many online resources that, that I have accessed. 
Um, but I, I just tend to read books, like you mentioned, Plato and Aristotle. And um, I will access that website that you mentioned, Ambleside. I will definitely look at that website as well. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really, apart from Sarah Flynn OD, um, we don't really have many. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, we don't really have many other people at the moment. Yes. Okay. Offering okay, resources. great. I'll yeah. put that in the show notes too. Um, so tell us about the progress you've made in the last, since you, you said ACES was formed in 2022 or yeah. 21. So, oh, 21. So two years. So tell us about the progress that you, you've had over the last year and a half, two years. Okay. Well, look, yes. Yeah, so I'll just look at my notes here. It's been, a, it's been a very busy last two years, just in, in a nutshell. We've we've made good progress. Number one, we've we've made most we've made more people aware about classical education. So word of mouth, um, using social media, people have discovered us. Um, as mentioned earlier, we we have a website. On that website, we post articles, we post videos. Uh, we have a monthly online newsletter, and I must say, I'm very pleased to say we have just reached. 400 subscribers good one year ago we one year ago we only had 80 we only had 80 one year ago this date so in the last 12 months we've gone from 80 to 400 so that obviously is a sign that people want to know about classical education um we've also organized some conferences including and i mentioned the conference that we had with yourself and so we had we had our first conference with Cersei institute this was a year ago in april we had over 100 Australians there, and we're very, I'm very thankful to the Cersei team. We also had a, a, a mini conference with, with yourself and your team at Beautiful Teaching. That was held last year in September, where we had over 20 Australians who attended that mini conference, where again, you know, we touched on, you know, Socratic teaching and some of the pedagogies behind classical education. So that was a, that was a, a real, real encouragement for us to find out more about the pedagogy behind the classical renewal and what it means to be a classical teacher, because as I said to you 20 minutes ago, none of us have been classically trained. So I thank you for that opportunity, Adrian. Um, as also already mentioned, a group of us did a course with Dr. Robert Woods um, in September, October, November last year, where we looked at the Mortimer Adler um, series. Another thing that happened last year, Adrian, is that um, one of one member of our committee, Div Krauser, created his own podcast called Educating Humans. I'm happy to send you um, any links. So we have an Australian that's got a podcast called Educating Humans. Well, you know what he does in that podcast? He actually goes through some of the books. I know that last year, Diff um, covered the book, The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis. He, he did four sessions on it. And he may even this year do some of the sessions on the books that you've mentioned. He may even do Charlotte Mason. Um, so we've got the podcast, we've got the website, we've got the online newsletter, we've had a few conferences. Um, we have a Facebook page, we have a LinkedIn page, we have an Instagram account. Um, they, they're probably the main thing that we've done <laughs> to this date. Yeah, um, in terms of, and we're just, and so, and we're just reaching out to people, um, you know, on, on a daily basis, we send out emails to teachers, to principals, um, and to priests, you know, we really, we're reaching out to everyone, uh, um, in Australia, who who is interested in in discovering um, the, the the beauty, like you say, the beauty and the joy um, mm -hmm. of of classical education. This is I awesome. Hope that your question. Yeah, it does. Yeah. What are you hoping for? What are your goals this year? Yes, um, this year we're we're hoping that we can motivate, convince Australians. Average Australians, parents, teachers, about the reasons why they should consider classical right. education as an option. We're hoping to convince more people, and we're also hoping to do more face-to-face -face meetings because everything that I've mentioned in the last five minutes has all been online, Adrian. And as much as I love the online environment, I also, right. to some point, do not really admire it. I want to have that that face-to-face -face meeting with my fellow Australians. See, at the moment, it's a bit difficult because ACES is made up of people who are scattered 
all around right. Australia. It's very hard for us to come together. Um, you know, we can't have people flying three hours, two hours to my city or me going. So I'm hoping to have networks here to answer your question. We want to have little networks, little hubs in each city in Australia. So a network in Melbourne, a network in Sydney, a network in Brisbane, a network in Perth, where those parents teachers come together and have forums, have okay. meetings, where they talk about, where maybe we can zoom up with people like yourself in America, where we can invite some Americans, where we can listen to you while we're having that face-to-face -face meeting. We need to do more of that. Um, we want another thing. I want to start, start speaking to business people because you know what? I forgot to say this, Adrian. We want to create schools. Right. ACES wants to create schools. As this movement picks up in my country, guess what? We're going to have to have schools out there. So we have to train teachers. And that's where beautiful teaching comes in. That's where Cersei comes in. That's where all these entities in America, because we haven't been classically trained. We need to be trained. And then we can create those schools. We can have those schools. But look, this is a long-term 50-year yeah. project. And this is going to take decades. Because one thing that we don't have in Australia that you have in America is we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have any institutes. We don't have any think tanks. We don't have policymakers who want to support us financially. Because right. everything also requires funding. We are volunteers. Everyone at ACES does this because they believe in it. I believe in it. We do it voluntarily because we love it. But as this movement grows, if we're going to create schools, we're going to need money. We're going to need investment. Anyway, I'll just stop there. I love it. This is great. <laughs> well, that takes me Thank to you. my next question about what are your needs? <laughs> I was it just yes. dovetails straight into uh, how, how are your needs being met and what other needs do you have? Obviously, to, on the, to answer your question, our first need is um, for people just to consider us, for people to listen to us, for people to meet us, for people in Australia to reach out to us, not to discard us, not to dismiss us, but just to reach out and say, Con, I'm interested in having a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Tell me about classical education. Tell me about ACES. What have you done? How can I help you? It might be word of mouth. It might be, John, for example, can you just tell five of your friends about me? About Not about me. It's not about me. About ACES. About our mm -hmm. conferences. About our conference that we're having with, with yourself, with others. N number two, um, another need is obviously we would like people to donate. Now, when I say donate, people to really believe that their money is going to go to something big. And that donation will probably be to – we don't even have an office. We're hoping that one day, Andrew, we can have a building. Mm -hmm. Now, we all work from our homes. We have no office. Um, we, so we don't have the infrastructure. We know, we're hoping that we can have a, a national office where we can have – we, we want to one day hire a, mark, a market person, a person that does marketing. That's going to cost money, Adrian, you know. We do this on our weekends. You know, we're, we're scurrying along to do this because we believe. But eventually, we, we need to have a paid person who's going to do the marketing, who's going to do our branding, who's going to send out our new letter, who's going to, you know, do all these things, but that's going to cost money. So we want, if there's a business person that's going to watch this video, please consider it. You're right. investing in something that's worthwhile, something that's beautiful. Look, right. I'm sure you have in America, Adrian, people in America, business people who get behind the classical renewal movement because nothing is cheap. Yeah, so there right. I on it. It's more fun, but it's also just, um, I don't know if, if moral need, it's just more support. We just want support. We want people to say, to give us a pat on the back and say, Con, we're behind you. We're behind you. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm thinking of is um, how, how in America we could support you. Are there any practical things that we could do to support you. I, I know that one of the, I'll just tell our listeners, I love classical academic press. I love the work that Dr. Chris Perrin is doing. And I know that he has provided many of the books that they publish. And that's what Sarah O'Day is, is and he's providing them at a really great price yes. <laughs> so that they can be think. provided for you. So, I mean, I know there are people here in America that are doing things and CRC, CRC giving you conferences for, uh, for free, 
donations only. And I think that's wonderful. But is there anything else that you can think of that Americans can continue to do for you moving forward? Number one, to pray for us. Yeah, I sincerely ask all the Americans to pray for us, first and foremost. Number two, if any American knows any Australian living in America, to let them know about ACES. Because I've met many Australians who live in America who are homeschooling their parents, their, 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 their children, sorry. So maybe just let them know about ACES. What else can Americans do for us? I would like Americans to continue training us. Yes, because we, we need your guidance. Now, you have been doing this in your country for much longer than we have. So we, we would like you to continue working with us, to train us, to help us, to guide us along the way, because we have no other trainer provider in our country. So I would, yeah, thank you. That's a great question, Adrian. So just to continue to build that relationship, you know, to work with us. And I know it means the hour, because I know that the hours are different from America to Australia, but we appreciate your sacrificing your hours, you, know, you coming for us at an hour that is not so convenient, that means a lot to us. That really means a lot. That's that's reaching out to our to us because yes, yeah, so the profession, the professional development is very important. And just so yeah, that's we will like more professional development, more training, and just your your um your guidance and your experiences of course. What are some of the mistakes that you made? that you believe we should avoid. As this movement grows, please go and say, look, please be weary of these things because we don't want, we want our movement to grow. We don't want our movement to stop and to halt. So yeah, I, I'm not sure if that answers you. Yeah, maybe say your, your experiences and things that we need to be weary of. I love that. That's great. Yes. Uh, one thing I want to go back to is your your board for Australian Classical Education Society. I know before you had shared with me about the diversity on your board, and I think I want our listeners to hear about that because sometimes people think of classical education and it's kind of in a little tiny narrow box of beliefs. And I my experience in classical education is that it can work across all beliefs. And there can be multiple models of classical education and all are beautiful and in their own right. And so I'd like you to tell our listeners just a little bit about the people on your board, if you would. Yes. Beautiful question. Thank you. On our, on our board, we have a diversity of voices. We have Orthodox Christians. We have Catholic Christians. We have Protestants on our board. Okay. We, and the beauty of that, Adrian, is that we have a plethora of voices that, that are heard during our meetings. I'm obviously an Orthodox Christian, so I bring in my orthodoxy during those meetings. I listen to people who are coming from a Catholic perspective, so I listen to their voice. However, there is mutual respect. There is mutual respect as we bring our traditions to this board um so and i and i welcome and i and but we also there may be some australians who want to approach it from a secular perspective mm -hmm. they don't want a classical christian education they prefer a classical education again we respect that um, we are not here to proselytize when we are called ACES, Australian Classical Education. So, so we are open to all possible paths. Obviously, I'm a Christian and I look at it from a classical Christian perspective, but I don't coerce. One thing I, I've learned from a little boy, Adrian, is I don't coerce anybody. I just show myself. I show the con and I respect everyone for their uniqueness and their identity. You know, we are all free to choose what path we want in life, you know, and that's beautiful. There, we don't go there with a script. When I go to our meetings, I don't go there to proselytize, to grow. I just go there to share the beauty of, like yourself, of classical education. And how people prefer to do this, that's their choice. They want to have a Protestant classical school, go for it. They want a Catholic classical school, Go for it. They want an Orthodox classical school. Go for it. Uh, we're not going. We're going to say. We're going to welcome that. We're going to say that is your choice. That you're going to have your board, your parents. So we ACES. We are very broad. We work with everyone. Um, 
Yeah, I hope that answers. And that's what's happened in our book. And we have a very deep and rich dialogue. That's great. And that's what classical education, the bedrock of a classical education, is to learn how to have a good civil discussion about ideas that matter. And that's, I mean, if you want to describe classical education, that's the heart of it right there. And so the yeah. ideas and the diversity, I think, matters. Um, in terms of like a secular classical education in Australia, is there even a possibility? Do you have like anything that's like the charter schools we have in America? It's come to my attention that there are some schools in Australia that are independently run. They are government schools, so they have to follow the government, the state curriculum. However, they have more freedom. Yeah, that's in terms what of charter what schools do, are like here, what, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's probably the alternative. Yeah, so that's starting in, in. I know it's very strong in West. I don't live in Western Australia. I live in Victoria. It's starting in Western Australia, and I think in Queensland. But look, I'm happy to do more research about that. Yeah. So that's something I think it's been around for the last eight years in that state. So there you go. So that and, and to answer your question, I don't see why those schools can't have a secular classical education exactly and that's you know? why i brought that up i'm you know feeling I mean? like i would say that the charter school movement in america the ha, is one of the biggest reasons why the classical education movement has boomed in the last seven or eight years because more and more charter schools are opening and it's giving more and more parents the choice and the um, exposure to a classical education. Yes. And so like if there was a person listening in Australia who is a businessman and has, you know, an interest in, in this uh, idea of starting a classical school, I think if they were able to start something like that, it would be amazing. And they could reach out to us to help them get in contact with other business people in America who have done that. Like I know the CEO of Responsive Education Solutions and what he started. I had an interview with um, John Adams Academy. The founder of John Adams Academy is on my podcast a couple of episodes ago. And he's just a regular businessman who used his own money to start this school. And it's a, it's a charter school. And so it's the same type of thing. It's an independent type of school. They have to meet the state standards, but they don't have to do it in the same way. So anyhow, okay. I, it's just an idea and a thought I have that if there's anyone listening in Australia who's uh, able to and interested in, uh, in that, uh, they could reach out, reach out to me and I could help introduce them to some other people who have done that. Um, um, also, thank you, and also to answer your question, we also have parade schools. Have you had a parade? I have I'm not. not. Sure if that's a movement in America. Parid, P-A-R-E-D, stands for Parent... I think it's parent-led schools. It's called PARED. So there are some schools in Victoria, where I live, and in New South Wales, that they're called PARED schools. So they are very big on character training. They're very big on reading great books. They're very big on parent involvement. So I've just mentioned three key words to you, parent involvement, reading out books, and character. They are the rest, they are the ingredients of classical education. Now, I have reached out to them people in pirate. And if there's anyone watching this very from a pirate school, um, please consider classical education. So there is another uh, a potential, um, to answer your question, Adrian, so we've got those pirate schools where they too can embrace. And to answer your question again, um, Adrian, last year, and I forgot to say this to you 25 minutes ago, and this is very important, my dear friend Adrian and listeners. Last year, Adrian, in September, there was a meeting in Melbourne where I live. 30 people from all around Australia came to Melbourne to talk about classical education. 30 people. I was invited as a representative of ACES, but there were also principals Adrian, from schools. Now, Adrian, can I mention some of these up, these emerging schools in my country? Can I get, so yeah. we have, for example, Sharp Mason College. We have Toowoomba Christian College, which now, Adrian, is called Toowoomba Christian College, a school of the liberal arts tradition. Good. That has just been added in the last couple of weeks. They've changed their name from Toowoomba Christian College to Toowoomba Christian College, a school of, so we've got, 
we've got Charlotte Mason College, we've got Toowoomba Christian College, we've also got a school called St. John of Crostan Academy, and also those classical school that is opening next year, and that's Father Stephen David. We've also got a school agent that opened two months ago called Hartford College in New South Wales, which is a, which is a, let's just say it's a classical school. It's beginning. Um, it's let's most yeah, classical slash liberal arts school in the Catholic tradition. So back to what I was just saying to 20 seconds ago, these people came to that meeting last year in September. So Toowoomba came, Hartford came, so-and-so came. I was there and we talked and, and guess what? Parrot was also there. There were two represents from the Parrot schools. So they showed us their model of what they're doing in their schools. So there were 30 of us, and I'm hoping there will be another meeting again in my country. So we're trying to get these people together where we hear what's happening in your school. What's happening in your school? What are you doing? How does that merge with classical education? And I'm hoping to my listeners, Adrian Fries, who is interviewing me right now, is going to be having... Uh, uh, please, a conference on April the 1st, where we look at the standards. Cersei Conference is having a, a conference in late April. Come to these opportunities because, as I said to Adrian 20 minutes ago, we need to learn from people who are trained and who have got that particular thinking. Thank you. This is wonderful. Um, I One clarifying question before I wrap up with my closing question. When you talk about these schools and you're calling them colleges, in America, college starts after you graduate from high school, from 12th grade, but it doesn't sound like that's the oh. case in Australia. No, not in, not, not, in Australia. No, not in Australia. So in Australia, we don't use the term high school. We use the term college. Okay. Yeah, we use it. So it's seven to 12 is a college, correct? Seven through 12. Yes, okay. Very okay. Yes, actually, that's a little, that's so a little more, yes. that's actually, yes. that term would be a little more true to the, the classical tradition, the universities in the medieval okay. age that studied the seven liberal arts, which is classical. Uh, it was, they called it university and that was that kids went to it when they were younger. Where, yeah. It's like, I don't remember exactly what grade it would be, but it would be like 14 years old or something like that. So, or 12. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a little closer I, to yes. the model. Yeah. Go ahead. And can I, can I also mention something else for one minute, please? I forgot to say to yourself and to your listeners, Adrian, that we also have a liberal arts tertiary college, which is after university, which is called Campion College, C-A-M-P-I-O-N. It's in city. It's Australia's first liberal arts tertiary college. We only have one in our country and it's in Sydney and it's more of the Catholic tradition, but that's where someone will go to if they want to do more liberal arts. So we only have one and it's in Sydney. Sydney. Wow. Camping. Wow. That's incredible. We have, we have them all over the whole country. <laughs> there you go. That's right. And I wish there was one in my city and in Brisbane and, in, but look, who knows? God yeah. works in mysterious ways. We're thinking that with the movement, Adrian, that more liberal arts tertiary colleges, because that's, you, you, you raise a very important question. What happens after you graduate from secondary school in Australia and you want to do more liberal arts? Where do you go? Where do you go? Right. Where right. do you study, you know? It's yes. true. Well, I'd like to end our podcast by asking our guest, what is a yes. quote from a book that has had a huge impact on you or what book do you wish you had read sooner in your life? Yes. I like to think, I like to say the quote. So as I mentioned to your listeners before, I'm an Orthodox Christian, Andrew, and I love reading the church fathers. I really love reading their literature. And whether you're Orthodox, Catholic, or Protestant, you can still read the Church Fathers. So I have read the books of St. Basil the Great. St. Basil the Great, Adrian, has written a book called Address to Youth on how they might benefit from classical Greek literature, which I believe is available online. You don't even have to buy it. It's available online, but I have the hard copy. So here's my favorite quote to answer your question. These are from the words of St. Bella the Great, and it's a short but beautiful quote. I'll read it slowly, Adrian. Virtue is the only possession that cannot be taken away and remains with us, whether living or dead. That's, that is my favorite. That's beautiful. 
Thank you. Well, this was a joy, and I'm so happy to know more about ACES and the work you're doing. And I hope our listeners will uh, support you more and uh, subscribe to your newsletter. And we will be sure to put in the show notes how they could donate to you, all of the different social media accounts you have, and how they could reach out to you and sign up for your newsletter as well. So thank you for for this wonderful conversation. I I want to thank you wholeheartedly for your belief, for your support, for your love and for your prayers, yourself firstly, and to all those other Americans in America who have supported ACES in their own ways. Um, There are many of you, and I don't want to mention that because I might forget some. So I'll just say everyone in America in the last two or three years who has believed in ACES, who is supporting us, I want to say from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of my fellow Australians, thank you. We wholeheartedly believe, thank you for what you're doing. And we ask you, again, to pray for us um, and to work with us um, as this movement slowly, slowly grows. And I believe that the movement will grow. The seeds have been sown, Adrian. People are coming back to those questions, what it means to be a truly educated purpose. And for those fellow Australians who are watching these videos, please, I speak from my heart. Just consider, explore classical education. And then I'll let you make the choice. Explore it as a new decide. I cannot coerce you. I cannot force you. I respect you as a human being. I respect every person I meet in this world. But just consider it. And it's called classical education. Thank you for listening. You can get involved in a few ways. There's a Facebook page where we actively discuss the ideas around classical education. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash classical education. And if you want to help offset our production costs, you can support the podcast financially by going to www.classicaleducationpodcast.com forward slash support. As the great artist and educator John Ruskin once said, Well, my friends, the final result of the education I want you to give your children will be in a few words this. They will know what it is to see the sky. They will know what it is to breathe it. And they will know best of all what it is to behave under it as in the presence of a Father who is in heaven. <laughs>